So while I wait for this swarm to work its way into this hive over here, I thought I'd take a minute and show you what I keep in my truck. This is most of the stuff that I'd need for the average swarm calls that I get called out on. And uh, one of the big things is making sure that you're prepared and that you have everything that you uh, think you might need. And one of the best ways to do that is when you first get the calls to ask some questions. First, are they really honeybees? Uh, how high up are they? Are they located in a structure? Are they located in a tree? Are they in a bush? Are they somewhere where you're going to need a ladder? Uh, you know, it's one thing to go out on a swarm that's hanging five feet off the ground in a bush, but it's a whole other thing to go out to one that's 60 feet high up in a tree. So some of the things that I keep, I have a ladder here. Uh, I use the Little Giant just because it's adjustable. It's compact. It'll fit in my truck. I can extend this out. I can uh, get up on top of roofs. I can get up, oh, about 15, 16 feet with it if I need to. I keep plenty of uh, tops, bottoms for nukes, uh, full-sized hive bodies. Um, I keep a couple boxes each size in here. Um, there's times I'll go out and I'll be on a swarm call and I might get three or four other calls while I'm out picking that one swarm up. So it's always a good idea if you're going to do it on a regular basis to make sure that you have plenty of equipment. One of the other things I keep here is a pole. This is my swarm pole and what I have here is a, a five gallon water jug that I've taken and cut in the, the bottom off and then up in the head here I've epoxied in a, a paint roller brush handle. And this wasn't my idea, this came from uh, someone else, but it screws right onto the end of this pole. Now there's lots of different poles out there. I chose a pole that was really uh, constructed well, it's durable, and it can take some uh, beating. Uh, there's a lot of poles out there that are just cheap aluminum and they're not going to hold up. But I can extend this out 20 feet, it gets me another 20 feet of reach. And some of the other things I keep with me are a set of pruners. Um, these are adjustable. These give me a little extra reach. Um, the reason I keep saying reach is one of the things you want to make sure you do when you're out getting a swarm is that you're safe. And having the pole extension, uh, a set of loppers, um, a sturdy ladder, those are all things that are going to help. Um, I try to avoid climbing the ladder as much as possible because anytime you're on a ladder you're always setting yourself up for a potential fall. So these are, you usually keep two pairs, you never know when, uh, you might need to clip two parts of a branch to get something down and while you hold it you can always have something else. You know, that doesn't, it can change. Oh, see. Tub here and in this tub I keep hose for my bee vacuum that I'll show you in a minute. I keep a hive tool, uh, queen cages and queen clips. Um, I also do removals out of structure so I keep rubber bands to rubber band comb into it frames. And then uh, one of the other things I also have is a bee vacuum. This is my setup. This is uh, just looking over other plans that I'd found online. This is the setup I came up with to work with my vacuum and for the type of structural removals and swarms that I pick up. And so what I have is I have a, a solid bottom. I put some rubber gasketing around. Um, 
to the hole. This is where the in pose goes. And then on top of this, I can set a hive body. Uh, deep, medium, anything that's just a regular standard 10 frame design I can set on top of this. And I have this piece here that sits on top of the box. And if you notice, we've got number eight hardware cloth. I've got a gap of about three inches between the between where the hardware cloth is and the top of this chamber. And then my vacuum sits right here. Here's the vacuum set in place. You can see it just slides right in. There's some gasketing material around here. Pops right on there, it gets a pretty good seal. And then I also have an adjustment gate up here. And this lets me open this back and forth and I can control the amount of suction that I'm gonna get through the hose. The whole idea is I want the bees to just lightly be pulled off of comb or off of the swarm. I don't want them sucked off of there and then slammed and come rolling into the box and smashed into the back and then just kill them. And the nice thing about this setup is, is when I get done, I can slide this whole top piece out. And this leaves ventilation. This will let me transport a swarm that I pick up or after I'm done doing a cutout, I can just pull this off, stick it on top. I can seal up uh, the intake line here, and then I can transport them without them getting too hot. They'll have plenty of ventilation up here at the top. Um, if you're gonna be doing a lot of swarm calls and a lot of removals, or you're gonna get into structural removal, this is a good idea to put yourself together a vacuum. It'll save you a lot of time. Mm-hmm. 